Thank from Maximum PC here at AMD's Tech Day. I'm here speaking with uh, Scott and Joe from AMD, and we're here at the uh, company's Carrizo event. And uh, guys, uh, beyond the fact that it's a AP, uh, AMD's latest APU, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, Carrizo? Yeah, absolutely. So, like you said, Jimmy, this is our sixth generation A series processor, and. What we really try to do here is optimize around the key use cases that most people do with their with their mainstream PC every day. And so, uh, you know, you want to do uh, smooth gaming. We've got that. You want to stream premium content. You know, we've made several optimizations around that. And you're looking for innovative uh, user experiences, and we've done that with HSA and, of course, the upcoming releases of Windows 10 and DirectX 12. So, uh, again, from a, from a high level, what we're really trying to do is just optimize around the things that you do most. Well, we do them at very, very low power points. That's really the key is to get, you know, in the mobile world, get more more experiences per hour, more hours. The uh, HEVC uh, video decoder, that's all about giving the highest quality video under the lowest, uh, you know, the lowest load. So we can do that for, for a very long time. Uh, same thing with you know, gaming. We can do much, much better low power gaming than we've ever done. You know, so there's been a lot of optimizations for the thin and light form factors, and for actually all you know all all power states across the across the board. Okay, and this is still on uh, 22 nanometer. 28 nanometer. 20, sorry, sorry, 20 nanometer. Uh, and I'm, we just you know, sat through the presentation earlier today. Uh, one of the the big key focus points is, is battery life, as you mentioned. Um, I believe you said uh, up to n nearly 2x battery performance uh, over a Kaveri. Is that right? Yeah, it's especially in the vid in, uh, in video, um, you know, depending on what you're doing, that that number does vary. But yes, it's it's up that high, and this is the same 28 nanometer process. Right, so right. So Kaveri was 28. This was 28. But we changed how we designed. We put more into this. We have almost 30 percent more transistors in a, in this design than we had in Kaveri. And we've done it by using high density libraries, changing our design styles, and those trend and that increase in transistors gives a massive value to the end user. That's how we built this this H.265 decoder, the DC decoder. That's how we improved our CPU performance. That's how we've improved our graphics performance. I mean across the board, more transistors is key. We've been able to do it without growing the chip size, but just using our brain. So you, you went from, uh, I believe Kaveri was a 35 watt part and uh, this is a 15 watt part, is that correct? So we can actually do both 15 and 35 watts. Okay, but gotcha. Like Joe mentioned, when we were considering where do we want to optimize, it's really that 15 watt uh, TDP that we want to optimize around, because that's where a lot of the notebooks are today. And you saw some dramatic uh, power efficiency improvements that we have at 15 watts and also uh, performance to go along with that. Okay, and it's something that you guys also, you know, AMD is really big on pushing uh, HSA. Um, can you sort of explain uh, what that is and, and, and what it means moving forward? Yeah, so HSA allows us to take the CPUs and the GPUs and have them work on a compute process. You know, something that is, you know, it's not graphics, you know, that we normally would use on the graphics. You know, we're actually doing compute, the same thing we do on the CPU. Each thing is optimized for a different attribute. And things are very serial in nature, right? You're making decisions, do I go left, do I go right? The CPU is better. When I'm working on throughput, but there's a lot of data that needs to be computed on, the GPU is better. HSA ties them all together with a single memory system so that they run most efficiently. You're always running the problem on the right, the right function. And you know, we do it with, a, you know, with supporting languages and programming styles that are very well known to every, to every programmer. So we're taking what they know today and we're building on that so that we have a large ecosystem of programmers you know, very early on. Uh, is this an open standard or is it something AMD is, is pushing? Uh, it's uh, run by a consortium. It's the HSA Foundation. AMD is one of the founding members. But we have companies like Samsung, Qualcomm, uh, Imagination, ARM. They're all members. They all contribute. Um, HS, you know, HSA started in an AMD lab, but then we realized very quickly that without this foundation, we wouldn't have an ecosystem. We wouldn't have the volume of partners, the volume of devices to move people from very traditional CPU style compute to this much more efficient, you know, you know 
much better way of doing compute over a, a, a broad array of ap applications. And so yeah, creating this foundation was fundamental and it's really now allowing us to move forward. And Parizo is the first device that implements it, the HSA 1.0 specification to its complete, complete form. And, and in order for, I mean, so not all programs inherently um, support HSA. Um, is that something you're, you're trying to push and what programs support it today? Well, I mean, today, you know, things are, are really done in OpenCL. That's how you exploit uh, the HSA-capable hardware very easily today. As we move forward, there'll be dedicated HSA programs that are in that basically don't need a driver, that the youth, basically everything's running under user mode, the entire program. And these applications, in order to be written, you need hardware. Carrizo represents that, and these will be things that come out in the future. So HSA runs OpenCL better, runs the latest versions of OpenCL better than any other architecture, but the true exploits of HSA you know, will be in the not-too-distant not future. Uh, is HSA possible on, you know, I just have to ask, is HSA possible on, you know, Intel NVIDIA solution? Um, you'd have to really ask that. I mean, there's a set of attributes that you need to have. There's a, a runtime that you need to support. There's a intermediate language that you need to support. So it's not just hardware. There's a set of attributes around the hardware, but then there's also software that you need to, you know, you need to invest and support in. You'd really have to go to Intel and, and NVIDIA and ask them what are their plans in this area? How do they plan to compete with HSA? Mm. That's something that only they can ask. I, I think the the compelling reason to ask is. Um, if they didn't adopt it, um, you know, one could one could surmise that maybe perhaps with only one player in the game. No, um, you're absolutely wrong. Remember what I said. We have Samsung. Mm. We have Qualcomm. We have Imagination. We have ARM. We have represent 80% of all compute devices built in the world are done by HSA Foundation members. The real question is, how does the 20% outweigh the 80? How does all the innovation from all these great companies get outweighed by two? Okay. I think that's the question you need to ask them. The other thing, Jerry, I don't know if you've had a chance to look at some of the demos we have, but we do have a couple of demos that will show things like Photoshop. Right. Uh, and that will that do make use of it. I think these are some very, um, you know, very real, uh, real use cases that people use today where it makes a big difference to them if they can have something that is uh, OpenCL accelerated and you see how much faster it completes when you're using AMD OpenCL acceleration versus not. And, and again, those are not a wait for the future and it will eventually come, but that's something you can benefit from. There now, and it changes how you think. You saw how fast it was? You know, if you had to wait for that uh, photo to be modified, it would change how you would use the software, it would change how you think, it would change how you'd interact with your, your medium. And so yeah, having very fast, very capable compute you know, being done on the GPU via OpenCL and enabled by HSA hardware. That's the way you make a kick butt system. What kind of performance gains uh, have you guys been seeing? I, I noticed earlier you guys you know, showed uh, Photoshop and... and uh... Yeah, if you have something that's OpenCL accelerated versus not, we'll see you know, as much as 17 times faster performance with the OpenCL acceleration with HSA. Okay, is this something that the end user has to, is this a mode that an end user has to go in or is it going to work automatically? How does the... It's really as a part of that application that they're running. So okay. when you look at that Adobe Photoshop, it's already got the OpenCL acceleration and you get that benefit. Okay. Uh, another big benefit that you guys uh, talked about um, in regards to this new APU is, is 4K uh, mm -hmm. content. Um, can you delve into what is the current uh, issue right now and how your chip uh, proposes to, to solve it? Yeah, so, so 4K, obviously, it's you know we're seeing 4K displays come out already. It's going to take a little time for complete adoption, but what we want to do is be out ahead of that, uh, be prepared. So as that 4K content comes online, you know, we have a notebook that somebody can go buy and then plug that into their 4K display if they want to go see that. Um, and just to be prepared, because somebody's going to hold on to that notebook for a little while, we want to be ready for 4K as it comes on. Yeah, and then the, you know, the decoder, decoder we've mentioned, that H.265 HBC decoder. That decoder allows us, allows, you know, basically streaming consumption of 4K much, much more efficiently. You know, it's a much, you use much less bandwidth to move that 4K content. So that's very important to the, the providers of that data, as well as the end user, because you may be sharing your link at your home or your business with many other users. So load, lightening that load is, is very, very important. And with that hardware decode, it's super, it's super, it's, 
It gives you a super smooth, beautiful frame. Yeah, if you saw that comparison of with the hardware decoding versus trying to do it uh, just in software on the competition, it's the difference between being completely unwatchable and having a great experience. It, you know, without the hardware decoder, it just it is it choppy. Stops. It, yeah, it's very very choppy. But with the hardware decoder, it makes all the difference. You can actually watch that high quality content. Yeah, and then we you know we we put in a scale that allows us to take content and upscale or downscale. And so today one of the challenges, you may have a 4K screen, but you may have very little 4K content. We have hardware inside our chip that'll upscale like 1080p to 4K um, you know, and, and, and allow you to take advantage of your higher resolution screens with lower resolution content. You were mentioning that uh, content um, upscaled to high resolution and then displayed at a lower resolution it actually looks better despite the resolution of the screen being lower. Yeah, I mean if you if you render at high resolution and then display at lower resolution, it's much better than rendering at that lower resolution and just display. That's a great point because especially we're talking about notebooks, right? And the 4K display, like native 4K display adoption for the attached screen with notebooks, you know, that's going to take a little bit longer. There are a few, but what we're finding is, you know, that does four times the number of pixels. It's going to take a lot of uh, battery to power that. So the, the attach rate of a 4K display is a little bit lower. So in the meantime, you can still get that 4K content, and it's going to look better even on a 1080p display for those reasons. Okay. Uh, speaking about resolution, uh, just moving on to something else that's sort of related to that is, uh, you know, gaming performance and things like that. And that's where, you know, you guys have a big head start compared to, to Intel integrated graphics. Can you talk about um, uh, the, the improvements made there? Let me, there's actually two pieces of this, right? You know, one is software. Um, and we have a, you know, we have a large team of folks that work on our driver, work on driver improvements, making sure each game title works great on AMD. That's, you know, that's something that takes legacy, takes time. You know, if you don't, you know, having that big discrete graphics business we have gives us a reason to invest big time there with all the best AAA titles. And then there's the hardware piece, right? And what we've done there is we've taken our, our graphics capability and made it be fully, you can fully exploit it now at much lower power points. We've improved our performance over 60% at the 15 watt level, which means gaming can now be done in a much smaller form factor than ever before. It's just a, you know, we'll continue to push and move here, but it is two pieces. So you always want to measure us and our competition, both at the software level and at our hardware level. We may have some of our motivation to that as well, right? So we feel like that if you buy a mainstream notebook, you deserve to be able to play games. And, and frankly, on the competition, you can't unless you want to you know, shell out the additional money required to get a discrete card. But you know, on our sixth generation A series processor, we have discrete class graphics on the die itself. And so you can actually play many of those most popular titles that are available today and have a great experience while doing so. So you guys are really pushing in, in the, uh, the graphics department. Uh, do you think that that could potentially eat into your gaming notebook sector? The one thing I, I gotta say is that um, you know, there'll, there'll be dedicated gaming notebooks. Um, they push the envelope to the max. Um, we love working with our partners in that area. It's just a ton of fun. Um, raising the bar on gaming across all notebooks—that's great for the industry. It's great for it's great for the people that write those those game titles. Um, I think the one thing you should never do in our industry is worry about making anything absolute. I think every, all bolts will float higher here. I don't think this is an issue. But we always focus on how can we make things better across every everywhere. And we don't worry if something goes obsolete. That's a high-class problem for us. Yeah, we continue to see games that are really pushing the envelope. We continue to see people that are very passionate about buying that R9-class graphics, the top-end graphics that you can get. So, so like you said, it, you know, it's something that we can't really worry about. We're pushing the envelope, and people are still going for those high-end graphics if they really want that kind of system. And then we just we just launched a, another initiative. We did it at GDC. It's called Liquid VR. It's a a, it's a SDK, a design kit aimed at virtual reality. Virtual reality will push the hardware so hard that you know we're, we're basically you know, starting on a new curve, starting on a new a new trend line. And you know the challenges there are going to be immense. But Liquid VR takes the things that AMD can do to the virtual reality community, lowers the latency, improves throughput, multi GPU, makes it easy to connect headsets, doing the things that take that next level of experience and enable it. Gotcha. In terms of um, um, Carrizo, like how, what is the performance gains uh, gains over Kaveri or even Intel's, uh, you know, the Iris graphics? Yeah, I think we saw just a little bit ago in the presentation. We'll see as much as 65% improvement 
over Kaveri, and, and we're actually lowering the, the TDP, the, the total power consumed while we're doing this. Um, so just generation to generation, you can see as much as 65 percent. Uh, in some cases versus Intel, we showed you know we might even double uh, the performance of Intel in some of those cases versus what they offer today. Yeah, I think in, in real world uh, scenarios, you guys had some slides showing, uh, I think, uh, League of Legends was around 50 something frames per second, uh, 1080p. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So some of the most popular games are those that you're going to play online. So League of Legends, Dota 2, and, and with uh, our sixth generation A series processor, it makes that game very, very playable, great frame rates. But not only that, but the other kind of thing we talked about was people want to be able to record this and stream it. And so when you're trying to stream and play at the same time, we showed that side by side comparison where competition starts to drop frames, it's down below 20 frames per second sometimes, while we're still sailing at, at 30, 40, 50 frames per second while streaming that same content. Yeah. I think when we talk about, or I think mostly the focus here uh, at this event, the impression that I'm getting is that it's a more, more Carrizo for, for notebook solutions, but I mean Carrizo is also going to be on, on desktop as well. Um, do you, I mean, is, that, is Carrizo a compelling solution for desktop? Uh, so the, the, it's very, I'd say it's really a, no, uh, a notebook and mobile uh, product. Okay. Um, in the desktop space, if you'll call it desktop, it, we're really looking at like all-in-ones, small form factors. So things that are, that are generally more thermally power constrained along the lines of a notebook. Um, but I mean, I think we had a segment where we talked about um, uh, leveraging both the APU plus uh, uh, discrete graphics card. Um, I think the, uh, the game made by Oxide Games um, was so able yeah, to get... So there we're talking really about Gridavari uh, and our next uh, A10 uh, processor that we're releasing. So, so certainly we have a solution there, but that, that one was a different product. Okay. In, in a general sense, when we talk about leveraging both the APU and the discrete card, though, um, that is something in a general sense that you can do with Carrizo also, but since it's constrained to a notebook form factor, it's going to be you know, a little bit lower total power compared to that other solution. Okay, I think uh, when, when it comes to you know AMD APUs, uh, most of our readers understand that the graphics are going to be um, pretty much top of the line as, when it comes to you know integrated graphics. Mm -hmm. um, but let's move on to you know the x86, the CPU side. Um, some people are concerned about that. You know Intel has uh, historically you know, performed better CPU side. Uh, what do you have to say to those 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 uh, those people who have doubts about you know, we're that? Gonna, you know, the excavator core is a, is a nice improvement from what we've had in Kabari. We get more work done on, on a per cycle basis. We do it at lower power. Um, I think in real world situations, we have a very nice balance between GPU and CPU. I wouldn't want to go and drag the CPU way, way up without dragging the graphics with it. And I think that balance is the key when we're delivering a notebook. Because notebooks are, they're different than desktops and then you know, you're not going out and upgrading your graphics or your CPU or notebooks. You're buying a complete experience that you know, needs to be balanced in order to get that, that, that good end user experience. When you look at the, the use cases of how people actually uh, use their notebooks, you know, it's, it's not things that are generally CPU bound. It's obviously they're on the web. They're playing games. They're streaming multimedia. Those things are not generally CPU bound. So, you know, even in those cases where uh, you know Intel may have a slight advantage on somewhere, um, our real uh, point of view here is that when users are actually uh, using their notebooks, what they're actually doing, we've made improvements where it matters. Cool. All right. uh, is there anything else you guys would like to say uh, about Carrizo to our readers? Yeah. Well, I've, I've got one big one. You know, it's, you know, as an engineer, uh, the one thing I say is your readers are our audience. Your readers, uh, you know, how they, what they state about our products, it means a lot to me. Because what we do is we listen, we take their feedback, we take your feedback, and we incorporate it into future products. So I can't wait to hear what you guys write about. I can't wait to hear feedback in the, in the forums and, and user communities. We've done the best we can. The engineers have worked their butts off. It's made, this makes them smile. Yeah, but makes you yeah. and, and as Joe mentioned, obviously we're very proud of, of what we've created here. Our engineers have done a fantastic job, and we're very anxious to see this in the market. Um, we're seeing fantastic adoption from the OEMs, so uh, I would look for this mid-year for the back-to-school cycle. And uh, I've never been more excited about a product launch, and I think uh, everybody else is going to be happy to see it as well. Awesome. Thanks, guys.